What's good, YouTube? You know who it is. It's your boy, Young Black, aka Mario Potter, aka Black Power aka the Young Dread Roster, No Imposter. And we're back with another music review. First one went well, so we're back with part two. <laughs> hey, so today we have Mississippi Zone, the legendary king in <laughs> that be zone, the king remembered in time, Big Crizzle, Big Crit, with his fifth project of his long career. We have Forever's a Mighty Long Time, which in my opinion is damn good. And I think the title itself is uh, it's very appropriate for the King. We were talking about, if, if you're a Big Crit fan, you know Forever in the Day is probably our favorite CD album project by Big Crit. To this day, it's a staple in his career that we all go back and be like, yo, that's the one, right? So, with this, look, there's 22 tracks. I wasn't finna sit here and play 22 tracks um, and do the whole thing. So, it's just a quick review, but I'm gonna go by, I'm gonna give you a little quick like, and um, yeah, man, first off, the first song, Big Crit, you know, dope, dope song, okay? He came in, banging, the, the instrumental was dope, okay? And of course, he comes straight in with the, with the with the lyrics, right? I'm perfect way to in, uh, intro the CD. But then, track two, man, track two he comes straight in with confetti and even heavy, nigga. Basically, he's saying, man, look, you getting all these praises, you getting all this this worship for being this rapper, whatever, whatever, or you being this guy, whatever. But your accomplishments ain't they lightweight. They not even heavy, man. They don't hold weight. Your confetti ain't even heavy, dog. And yo, when we talk about when we talk about people getting praises right now in hip hop or in the world period, people getting praised for dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that's irrelevant. And you know, he kind of speak on that. Like, come on, bro, you, you you're getting you're getting the big head for not doing nothing special. <laughs> Your confetti ain't even heavy, okay? <laughs> Track three comes straight in with Big Bank featuring the King of the South himself, Ti. Okay, when I first heard this song, I said to myself, Big Crit knows his people. Big Crit knows the South because this is this is the time of year with classic. And if you know what classic is, like down here in Birmingham, when this dropped, Magic City Classic was right, uh, right on uh yeah, matter of fact, it was the same weekend this dropped, okay? Magic City Classic, big thing, uh love football team, marching bands, all that, parades. Um, um, what's it called? Okay, I'm tripping. Tailgating, I think it was tailgating. You come down, third half, shell station, with the with the uh, uh, speakers knocking and all that, man. This song right here was perfect for that weekend. This album was perfect for that weekend. Big Kurt came with a trunk beating anthem like he always does, cause he's from the South, and we all know. Down here in the South, is all about them trees, man. It's all about them subs. Which brings us into track four, my first favorite track on the album, Substance Time. What? Yeah, Sub Substance Time. My Sub Part Four. You know, if you if you're a Big Creek fan, you already know it. My Sub is a, is a is an ongoing mini series in his uh you know in his album projects or whatever. And this one, hands down, might be the best one. Um, first off, being produced by the great great DJ Manny Fresh, right? And we have uh, some 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 pretty dope lyrics here. You know what I'm saying? Automatic, quick, make of automatic shape. It's perfect. It goes with the song so well, and it goes with the the feeling you get when you hear some boom. You know, down here, if you if you know anything about the South, you, you Southern music, man, we all about that boom, that eight oh eight and that bass, man, that boom, all the way. You gotta have both. You know what I'm saying? Keep it knocking down here. We all about it. Every rapper from the South has come out with a trunk beating anthem at some point. And we still do. It's, it's just it's just part of the culture. But the great part about this song is the beat switches. Oh my God. When I first heard the beat switches, it gave me that feeling like when you heard Duckworth on Kendrick Damn Project. Man, the first beat switch was nice. Right? But then the second, oh my God. 
goodness, it was just pretty. And you know, that's to be expected from someone as uh, great as DJ Manny Fresh and someone like Big Crit, who's really uh, uh, deep in the Southern style of music and deep in producing himself. He knows what fans like. And this one right here was definitely a really good production. I mean, the fact that he was able to get DJ Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh ain't cheap, one. Man and Fresh ain't easy to come out of hiding. He, he does what he do, and then he go back to, you know, doing him. He ain't really out there like he used to be, but he is definitely one of the greatest producers, DJ, in hip-hop, hands down, especially in the South, okay? Being on track number five, we got 1999. This one, to me, felt like uh, another reference, Currency, bottom of the bottle. It wasn't supposed to be a radio kind of hit, but... The way it's put together, you got Lloyd on here singing, you know what I'm saying? Very, very uh, radio play, radio friendly. This one's here is definitely going to be on the radio. It's definitely going to be in the clubs. And ladies going to love it. It's a nice, smooth, southern feel once again. You got back that ass up like it's 1999. Now, we all know that kind of, that, that, that thing has been overdone so many times. You know, juvenile, back that ass up. But the 1999s was 2000. We all know it's been overdone. But Crick is so good at what he does. He flips it. He makes it real smooth. He don't make it a, a real big twerk song. He makes it real smooth. He makes a nice dance song. More of like a, a, a cadence. You know what I'm saying? Like serenade. <laughs> Not serenade, but like back that ass up like it's 1999. Like real smooth, man. Ladies going to love it. Lloyd here. Um, Lloyd was nice. Um, I don't think he was necessarily needed on this track, but it was nice to hear from Lloyd because Lloyd is pretty dope. And when he was at his prime, man, he was up here, okay? That's before Chris Brown took over the game. You did. <laughs> then we got my second favorite track because it's got the legendary Triple OG. Texas on Bun B and RP the Uncle Chad Pimp C for life. We got Pimp C on here. Oh man, anytime you you I hear a Pimp C sample or a Pimp C verse or one of Pimp C's um um I guess you can call it like interludes from another song from back in the other albums, man, I guess the cheers because Pimp C was just a real one. Pimp C was a great and you know what I'm saying? Like this was really nice. The beat was all UGK. You could hear it. And I love how Bun B um, came in doing what he does best. And then Crick came in with that Southern playlist, the Cadillac funky music type of flow. But it kind of, it resonated with the song very well because it's very in remembrance of Pimp C, especially the chorus. You can get out you on the grind. You really need to eat your mind with me. That's, that's Pimp C all day, you know what I'm saying? With the, the nice little vocals and shit like that, man. A great song. I love it. I play it all the time. Track seven. Gotta get up to calm down. This song was dope. Um, yo, what I liked about this song was, once again, you know who his idols are. You know who he loves. He's playing homage to the South. If you know anything about um, flows and cadence and things like that, man, this was definitely Southern playlist of Cadillac, funky music, big boy type of flow with a little bit of Scarface. When you come with the da 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 like that's 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 definitely big boy from '90s and a little bit of Scarface in there, really clean, man. And then CeeLo came in. CeeLo's a legend. For y'all who may not know CeeLo, you might know him as, um, damn, what's the name of that group? Um, Nars Barkley. There we go. Nars Barkley. I think I'm crazy. You know. Um, but yeah, CeeLo is actually a legendary rapper from Goody Mouth, um, Dungeon Family, right? Um, but his verse here was kind of more playful. I really was hoping that he was going to come with something a lot more, you know, a lot more substance, but it was still a good CeeLo verse. 
don't get me wrong. Great track, production was cool, of course. Nice, um, like I said, nice kind of outcast feel to production too. You know, real funky, real nice. Then you have track number eight, my second, or can I say it? Fuck it, this is definitely my second favorite track. Looking like a layup, layup, man. Perfect, and, and you know what, he, like, again, he goes and shows you who he's paying homage to, and you kind of know who he really listens to, and who he really uh, admires when it comes to his music, because this is definitely giving me first of the month Bone Thugs vibes from when I heard, first heard it, which I think is why I love it so much, because I'm a diehard Bone Thugs fan, and this one right here, looking like a layup, I mean, the beat, chorus, the hook, um, the way he's harmonizing on here while he's rapping, definitely Bone Thugs feel all the way through. If you're a Bone Thugs fan, you definitely gonna appreciate this track. I do. I love it. I play it all the time. It, when I first heard it, I, I didn't even go to the next song. I think I played this song like three times in a row before I was like, all right, let me go to the next song. <laughs> but yeah, man, this, this, is a, this is a beautiful track. Great content on the song, really feel good, and, you know, in the whole basis of the song, it's like looking like a layup, you know what I'm saying? He says, you've been grinding long enough to get a layup, like, you, you've you been working long enough to, this is your turn, this, this is your chance to get that, that, that shot, you know what I'm saying? You've been working long enough, you've been playing, going hard enough, man, this is your, this is your shot, you know what I'm saying? You deserve a shot, you know what I'm saying? You deserve your chance to win, and, um, Damn yeah, man, I love it. I love it. I play that track a lot. Now, next we have <laughs> what I could like to call one of my favorites. Um, I love when Crit does his little his little skits or whatever. And he had track number nine is in the little classic in the little with the bitch. It's a classic, you know what I'm saying? It would do, you know. Right now I'm living in a world where music is so digested, it's so easily easily bleeding digested um and so quick right we get music all the time right and we're so quick to call something a classic and he basically saying he's like dude like man you, you just got that one you, how you gonna say it's a classic you, you just heard it and dude's like man it's classic you know what i'm saying people other dudes like what you mean it's classic what you mean it's a classic you don't even, you don't even listen to it for real you just do it hey it's a classic for real and then, you know, opinionated people, especially social media, you know what I'm saying? We get on there, and you know how dudes like to flex, right? And then female, you know, dude, at the end of the he was like, the girl was like, oh, you heard that, that, whatever, whatever? He was like, oh, yeah, 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 it's a classic, right? She was like, nah, that shit was whack. <laughs> and then he turned around, you know what? That shit was whack. And, and that's how a lot of people are, you know what I'm saying? They allow their opinions to be swayed by other people, you know what I'm saying? Um, especially when it comes to music, you know what I'm saying? All it takes is one, 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 one wave of people to start hating, and everyone else is like, oh yeah, I'm hating too. Yeah, that shit was trash. Oh yeah, that was whack. You know, I'm guilty of it. You know what I mean? Track number 10, track number 10 is Oxcord. Oxcord is, um, it could have been a, a, a throwaway. It wasn't necessarily uh, needed for the album, but it was still cool, you know what I'm saying? Uh, beat was dope. It was more of a, it's kind of a throwaway. I'm sure it was on a mixtape somewhere at some point. And then he was like, you know, just throw my album. Hey, hey Brian, what you doing? I'm keeping it in there. <laughs> Don't put me in the video. <laughs> you already in there. Yeah, man, Oxcore, basically, it's a cool jam song, right? Basically, the, the whole um, point of the song, you know, you get in the car with somebody, and they put on songs or whatever, and you and you sitting there, you're like, uh, shit's not, shit's trash, bro. Or you be like, I ain't really lit, just pass the Oxcore, bro. Like, you ain't jamming. You ain't, you ain't putting on nothing that's, everyone's going to sleep. Everyone's getting upset because you got this trash on. Just pass the Oxcore. <laughs> Then you got number 11, another dope song, Get Away, and got to get away from the bullshit that they own. You know what I'm saying? He, he was really speaking here more to, you know what I'm saying, 
once again, people's perceptions of things and how people are so easily swayed into into life and doing different things. And a lot of people be on some bullshit. And he, in his situation, you know what I'm saying, he was speaking to the label, not speaking to the label, speaking to his situation with the label. And, I, and after watching the interview with him on, on Everyday Struggle, it was very clear why he made this song. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, running circles, you know what I'm saying? It was, you know, trying to get him to run around too. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yo, I gotta get, gotta get away from the bullshit they on. You know, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? When when we wanna grow, when, we, when it's time to grow, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get away from the bullshit. You gotta cut that shit off, man, for real. You gotta, you gotta isolate yourself and get in your lane. And that's what that song is about. Dope song. Um, Chris, Chris, uh, lyrics here was, um, he was all right. I ain't gonna flex, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't gonna overhype the whole album, you know what I mean? But it was dope, anyway. And then that was the end of um, album one or CD one, because remember this is a double CD, twenty two tracks. Okay, that was the Big Crit side. Now the genius of Big Crit. Now we get to Justin Scott, which is Big Crit's first uh, actual name, government name, Justin Scott. Now we get into the crit that's, you know, the one we like to hear, the one that likes to speak on the issues of what's going on in society. He likes to speak on his mental, you know what I'm saying? And Justin Scott, beautiful track, beautiful track, loved it. He definitely went and switched the pace um, of the album altogether with these um, next few tracks. Then you get number two, mixed messages, where he's basically talking about man. He 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 broke bro, ah, he broke it down in the interview, basically saying, I be rapping about this, but I also be rapping about this. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm rapping about not drinking, but I'm also telling y'all to also get throw every weekend, get fucked up. But I'm telling you, I'm having problems with stopping my drinking, and I don't need to be drinking. He mixed messages. He he go through a list of different things that he talks about or that he may preach about and then he'll go back and kind of contradict himself in other songs he does and i think we all get caught up in it at some point you know what i'm saying but that's why they say that you know practice what you preach right but mixed messages and dope song production was nice i like the the the, the beat behind the beat that was kind of dope then you got this, his breakout song, which I didn't even know it was his first, his first single. I thought Confetti was his first single. But apparently his first single is Keep the Devil Off Me. You know, he's very kind of religious dude, right? From the South Mississippi. So he's got this kind of gospel tone, you know, church drum banger right here. Keep the devil off me. You know, sometimes you gotta keep the devil off. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep that hate, that negativity off of you. And that's what this song is is uh, uh, I'm playing to, you know what I'm saying? Talking about where he's from and how this hate going on and how there's so much negativity trying to get up on him and, and ruin him, but he gotta he gotta shake that shit. You gotta get off him, bro. I gotta <laughs> leave the devil off him. Track number four, Miss Georgia featuring, who's that, Joy? Miss Georgia Horny? Oh yeah. Yeah, Miss Georgia Fornia. Um, it was a dope song, but it really didn't have too much replay value for me. It was nice, production was nice, crit was nice as well, but it just wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Yeah, the track Everlasting is pretty dope, you know what I'm saying? The first verse he was kinda going, talking to this girl, you know what I'm saying? Dude, this vibe we have is everlasting, this relationship we got everlasting, you know what I'm saying? This this time we got everlasting. And if you know, you get it, you get it. Is 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 these relationships that I got in life are they everlasting or temporary? It's just for here. And Crit goes with his. This is kind of unconventional flow, but it's dope though the way he does it. Um, this is something I haven't heard Crit do before, which I appreciate. I like to hear rappers try different things, as long as it works. Sometimes they be trying stuff, and it, it is. It's, you just be like, no. You be like, <laughs> you be like, nah. You could have kept that. You know what I mean? Now number six, 
great song. Higher Calling featuring Jill Scott, of course. Beautiful song. Love Jill Scott on here. If you know who Jill Scott is, you know she's like a, a soul queen, right? You know, her voice, her vocals are very special when they go on certain songs. And when she's put on rap songs, she's used perfectly. Every time I haven't heard a Jill Scott feature on a rap song that I didn't like. But Crit, was, Crit here was nice, okay? Crit did what he did best, you know what I'm saying? And he delivered a nice poetic kind of I don't know man it's it, poetic and how he you know he he, he he was he was waiting for, well not waiting but he was like calling out you know for the music to call him back you know for the music to say hey you know it's time to come back let's, let's do this let's make something special happen you know what I mean well, a lot of rappers like to uh, reference hip hop as a woman and they, uh, the relationship with them we hear it all the time but uh, it makes sense you know what I'm saying hip hop is a relationship for a lot of these rappers and it's, and it's a love-hate relationship, you know what I'm saying? You hear that, and oftentimes, in rappers um, like Common, Eminem, you've heard it from Kendrick, you've heard it from Cole, you've heard it from Crit, you've heard it from many people, Jay-Z. It, it, it's just one of the names. Now, you have The Weeknd in the Lube, which, again, another funny one. <laughs> um, and then we got Price of Fame. Price of fame, you already know. When Crit comes out with, with with a project, he's gonna tell you what's been on his mind lately. And this song especially speaks to Crit for real, for real. Now listen to it. I hear Crit, you know what I'm saying? I hear Crit, and he's basically talking about, you know what I'm saying? Is this stuff that you have or that you that you're working for and and, and, and sacrificing is it is it worth the price of fame? You know what I'm saying? It, and this is what happens when you give the fame. You know what I'm saying? Understand, this is the cost. You hear that term, pay the cost to be the boss. It's the same thing with being famous or reaching for that for that limelight status. You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be a price. Always. You know what I'm saying? Then you have drinking sessions. Drinking sessions was was his, I won't say a cry out, but it you will. Know, Talking about his his drinking habits, you know what I'm saying? If you've been a Crip fan, you follow him, you know he's talked about this a number of times before. But he recently got serious um, after watching an interview about Colt Turkey, no alcohol, because he basically talked about him being an alcoholic, you know, having a problem with this um, addiction. And in the song, it was kind of like one of the joints you might see it if he made a video, he's at the bar or he's at somewhere and he'd probably be drinking while he's talking about his drinking problems, right? And then you have the light featuring Bilal. If you know who Bilal is, you know, dope guy. But the light is um pretty dope song. I, I love it. And that jazz feel to it. Real poetic and then this song crit speaking to like I said, this is a Crit, do we get for the insides? Let's talk about the injustice. He makes a, a talk about Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman still being free. And then the next verse, he, he speaks to, you know, in one part of the song, and in that verse, he says, you know what I'm saying? Uh, kings want to be niggas, I hope you make a change. Uh, queens want to be bitches as long as they get paid. Like, it's <laughs> it's crazy because it's true. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we got black men out here that. You know what I'm saying? Are willing to take the title as a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Or a thug or a savage or a street nigga. Then rather be kings or rather be, you know, more, 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 more. Can't think the word I want to say, but you know what I'm saying? They, they want to not be more than they can be. You know what I'm saying? They, they're comfortable being niggas. And then you got these females out here that, are, that have no problem being thoughts they did thought nation is real life like you see it amber rose with the slut walk and all that they have no problem being 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 thoughts being being hoes bro like this this whole is life man, man. real talk go on twitter you'll see it for yourself whole is life um 
So we gotta shine a light on these situations, you know what I'm saying? That's what the track plays too. I love this track. Um, very big critish. <laughs> but uh, I love this track. Great track. Uh, last track, Bury Me in Gold. Bury Me in Gold was just a beautiful song. Um, you feel it, it's kind of heavy. You know what I'm saying? Um, talking about, um, what I think no one should talk about is death. Um, but he's saying like, when I'm gone, you know, bury me in gold. When you're talking about gold, not talking about actual jewelry, but like, bury me in, 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 in my accomplishments. Bury me with love. Bury me with all these things that are priceless, but they're, they're, they're almost like gold, right? It, it, it's a beautiful song. It's something I expect from Big Creed. I mean, the beat. Me and go. Yo, that's a beautiful song. Um, man, I'm telling you, this 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 song was so beautiful. And he's talking about, you know, saying how brothers out here, we, and him included, was out here trying to, you know, all you wanted was the gold watch, gold chain. We want, we want, we want all that. We want all these 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 flashy things. You know what I'm saying? It's like they always say, oh, when you die, you can't take it with you. He's like, oh, bury, bury me, bury me with these things, but, but, but make it, make it mean something. Like, bury me as a sign of my confidence, as a sign of what I was able to obtain here in this world, coming from nothing, you know what I'm saying? Bury me with my accomplishments, bury me with my goals, bury me with goals, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you would think you hear this song, like, but if, if you've heard it, you know it's a beautiful track. You know, he's speaking from the soul right here. It's a, it's a great way to end the project, the album. So, yeah, that's forever. It's a mighty long time. Big Crit. Definitely, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I don't care how anybody feels about it. It's a 9 out of 10 in my book. Great fucking album. Long awaited album. So glad we got it. So glad we got it. It's a beautiful track. I mean, I, I'm a big crit. Thank you. Um, I've been waiting for a big crit project since Cadillac. Actually, no, I've been waiting on this project since uh, I've been a free agent. I've been a free agent. Even when I was signed, it was more tied till I die. When he, when, he, when he came independent, he said he was dropping an album. Every crit fan knew what was up. Knew he was about to get the best fucking work that he ever gave. And this right here is, a, is definitely in my book, hand down his best album, and then forever, uh, forever in the day. But forever's a mighty long time. Very appropriate album title. Uh, very appropriate album title. And I, I, once again, I gotta thank Big Creek for delivering this masterpiece. It's gonna get slept on. It's not gonna get diamond or platinum because Creek is not mentioned in the top 10 rappers. I don't know why he's not in that discussion when this project is a testament to why he should be in that discussion. But it's fine. That's a subject for another time. You know who it is. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Comment, share, subscribe. And don't forget, this is Black Power Fit. Not only hate shit, just make up a great shit. I love doing these music reviews. I'm going to do some more. And I'm going to have some other things coming to the channel with the homies. Hey, but stay tuned because I'm going to do this Wiz that just dropped today. Because I'm a fucking huge Wiz fan. So stay tuned for that. Um, 
laugh now, fly later. Oh, it's going to be great. Anyway, till next time. Peace.